Hey everybody, Jacob Godar here. Today we are talking about how to grow a million dollar business faster. What I like about this whole topic is it doesn't matter if it's the million dollar business you're shooting for. Whatever you're doing, this will help you grow up faster. So if you're just shooting to get to your first 100, if you're just shooting to hit a half million, whatever it is, and all of it's just, I'm not belittling any of that if you're just shooting for a million because you could do a hundred. This will apply to all of that. So if that's something you're wanting to accelerate, you're wanting to move forward, you're looking for the, the way to do that, this is the video for you. Before we get into that though, I really, really want to thank all the members of Growcom for asking such good questions all the time that will also motivate some of these YouTube videos. And this is the type of things we talk inside of Growcom about how to accelerate your business, how to like business strategies is a call that we've just had. Um, all of these things to propel what you're currently doing. Let's get into this topic of how to grow faster. Now, when I look at business, I've said this a million times, and that's why I think I wanted to dig into this. I've had this topic of how to grow faster, how to grow to a million faster, a hundred thousand, whatever the revenue is, like everybody shoots videos based on that. But I normally gloss over that with my kind of canned response of marketing, sales, and production, and focusing on those three. And I don't think I do it enough justice. I wanna dig into that a little bit more. I know everybody wants to know exactly what to do. That is very, very, very hard to know exactly what to do, but but what I can tell you is I think of this like a triangle, marketing, sales, production. And how well does a triangle spin? If you were to try to roll, if wheels were triangles, how well would they roll? They would be very, very bouncy and very, very inefficient, right? So the idea is, is when you first start this out, it's barely spinning because you're on this pointy triangle. And you try to smooth this into a circle fast as possible to make it where the wheels on your business turn. Because at first, they're not turning. At first, you're trying to get things accelerated. And it's, you have a big sale, it topples onto a side. You produce the job, it topples onto the side. And what you're trying to do is smooth out that action. So, so some of the things you can do to smooth out this wheel are, are basic, basic things. Number one, this is gonna sound corny, you've heard it a million times, but it's not bullshit. Invest in yourself. That doesn't mean you have to spend a dime on conferences. Just read, educate yourself, watch what other people are doing. Watch a YouTube channel like this if you know. Don't watch a YouTube channel of somebody that's consistently just doing, if you're wanting to grow to a million, or we're using million as the marker because of the title of the video. If you're wanting to go to a million, don't watch a bunch of YouTube videos of people who are doing 100, 200, $300,000 in sales. Look at people who are doing a million and beyond. You always wanna set a marker higher than where you're at. So educate yourself, gravitate and look towards what those people are doing. And when you're doing that, we, things like Growcom, things like conferences, all of that's educating yourself. But some people get really bent out of shape about the money. The quicker you go, the more that stuff will come and you'll happen and you'll wanna be involved in things. Like I've, I've benefited from everything I've been to. Grant Cardone stuff, Tony Robbins stuff, Sean Whalen stuff, Andy Frisilla, Ed Milet, any of those things I have benefited from and it has excelled my business. And a lot of times, not by the way you think, not someone giving those silver bullets, it's more that I went to a place, I got some actionable items to help my business and I continued to grow my network of people who I could lean on to get information from as I continue to grow and I could continue looking for more mentors. Like I said, look to someone that's doing more than what you're doing. Now I wanna expand on this topic of looking to someone that's doing more than what you're doing. If you find someone you don't have to exactly mentor them, just watch what they're doing. But you can reach out to these people. There are people who, yeah, I spend a lot of time on trying to help other businesses. There's a lot of people that do not do that. There's a lot of people that are just running their own business and if you came up to them and said, hey, I'd like to buy you lunch and pick your brain and and um, and see what, you know, just try to be a value to them as well, not just make it all about you, you could start a friendship, which that could turn into a, a mentoring relationship. My very first friendship mentoring relationship was the, um, really number one, the person who helped name Scooters Lawn Care, Scooters Lawn Care, and then two, my uh, last boss is still friends to this day. And those are all just from cultivating those friendships. But now, as we're looking, and you don't wanna get hung up on just your sector. So if you're a lawn and landscape, you don't wanna just be thinking about lawn and landscape because every business could show you something you could do. But 
in the specific industry, if you're looking to someone, you're wanting to get to a million and you're looking at the people who are doing a million, now we need to model the things they are doing. Don't try to forge your own path on every single thing you do. Some things you will do that, you'll get the opportunity to do that as much as you want, but if there's already handbooks in place for other people, uh, procedures, all this remedial things that you could copy and paste. And when I say copy and paste, I don't mean directly copy, make it your own, tweak it, ask for permission, you know, whatever the case may be. A lot of this, you can just make it your own and you can use it for the structure, right? Model all these things into your business so you don't have to waste time on those things. All a business is, is it's, it's an operation of the marketing and sales and production, and then it's continuously trying to get more efficient. So more procedures happen, more structure happens, more HR things happen throughout the time that it is in business. Now, that takes time to get all those things, but if you can go to another business that has all these things and you can find out what these are, have a mentor where you can just use all this stuff, start implementing it in your business, you're cutting out massive sections of time that otherwise you would have to try to forge your own path and you'd have to do this all on your own. So self-investment, investing in yourself, self-education, reading books, mentoring, modeling companies that are doing what you wanna do, these are all great things. It's kind of my very first topic of how to accelerate. Now. I've been talking about how this is a triangle that you want to get to spin. Another thing I see people do is they focus too heavy on one sector. Uh, Michael Gerber's book, e -Myth, is a great example. Technicians, like if I was a landscaper, which I was, that's why I kind of started this business, I knew something about it. Technicians will come out of that and say, because I can do a great landscape, I'll have a great business. That's not the, that's, that has nothing to do with having a great business. So all they focus on is production. Well, that's where the issue becomes. That's when that triangle will never smooth out if you don't focus on everything. You can't just figure out how to do great production. You have to figure out how to market great and sell great to continue to speed up the wheel. And the more you educate yourself, as mentioned beforehand, the more you'll be able to work on those other sectors. You were a great tech, now you have to learn about marketing and get people in place for marketing or become the marketer, whatever that is, and then learn about sales. Figure out, usually the owner has to be the first person that's really good at sales. And you have to learn these other sectors. So educating yourself more is gonna allow you to spin that wheel faster and faster and smooth out those edges and make it less of the floppy triangle that just beats the hell out of you as you're moving forward. After we get past realizing we need to work on all the sectors, we've educated ourselves. Now, those three sectors, you need to ferociously be looking at those at all times and be questioning which is lacking and then immediately fix it. If we're lacking in production, figure out why fix it. If we're lacking in marketing, figure out why, fix it. If we're lacking in sales. So holding yourself accountable, looking at these sections of your business, ferociously digging at the problems, uncovering those and fixing those. And sometimes you'll need to get a mentor involved. Sometimes you'll need to get peers involved. Sometimes you'll need to ask for the advice of your team, ask the advice of other people. Don't be too proud to not go to others to try to fix these because this thing's spinning and getting where it's a fine-tuned wheel instead of a triangle that beats the heck out of the operation is what's going to allow you to then spin faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and grow and grow and grow and grow and continue to work on little things. So now that we went over that, I want to give examples of in these different sections, what can we be watching? What can we be doing? What can we be continuously tweaking once we feel like these things are moving forward to make sure we continue to move in the right direction? And to make sure we move consistently forward in each one, I'd like to start with marketing. Marketing is one that it's really challenging because at first people don't want to spend money on marketing and the only issue there is no one buys from you if they don't know who you are. So you have to spend money on marketing or you have to do some kind of guerrilla marketing and eventually you'll just learn even if it seems like more than I can spend, if it's effective, it's what I need to do. Because the idea of marketing is, and you can't always quantify this, but the idea of marketing is, is you put one dollar in you get two or three dollars out but some things to be watching as you're moving forward and some of the things you can be doing to monitor these sections is one having marketing plans two looking at looking at your source reports and see where is your marketing hitting from what is doing well so then you can amplify those areas so really you're you're looking at if you don't have some kind of report 
for when your leads come in, someone calls and says, hi, this is so-and-so, I would like to get with Johnny's Landscape. Um, if you don't ask them how do they hear about you, you're failing your own company because that's data to allow you to then know more about that client in the future and to then market more effectively to them in the future. So source reports, marketing planning, you know, knowing what you're going to do throughout the season. And finally, some testing, like marketing is going to cost money. You're going to have to try some stuff here, try some stuff there, go back to the source report, go back to individual tests on that marketing, see what's working, tweak and consistently push it forward. So that's a little bit of marketing and this stuff's really deep. I'm just grazing the top of this because this video could go for hours, but I want to give you the idea of these things because we're trying to make this wheel consistently spin faster and faster and faster. So those are some of our metrics there. Next, let's talk about sales. So with sales, a sales goal, it doesn't matter if you're the only salesperson or you've got hundreds of salespeople. We have a yearly goal for our revenue, which is ultimately a sales goal. You've got to sell it to get it there. Then you've got monthly goals. You've got weekly goals. You've got daily goals. However you want to break it down because basically weeks build months, months build years. Million dollar goal may sound really big, but then when you break it down, it's not half as big as you think it is. Especially if you've got some reoccurring work that's already sitting there, you've already got work on the books. Like I know in Illinois, we're already gonna have seven or $800,000 of reoccurring work. No, 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 much more than that. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We, we're gonna already have like 1.1, 1.2 of reoccurring work that's gonna happen whether we sell anything or not. So then we could back work into our numbers of our sales goals to hit our targets. So having those goals, having those projections, if you start having salespeople, having commissions and incentives to push them towards those objectives with the design of not just pushing those to those for the sake of selling, pushing those, pushing people to those for the sake of selling more work, being more profitable and everybody winning. So that's how we continuously work that wheel of sales and sales will start out as you, then it'll start out as team members helping sell, then it'll start out as adding, then it'll be adding commissions to incentivize people more and each little thing, like the section of the wheel gets built out and built out and built out. And before you know it, you're adding all the stuff in between marketing and sales and production that just smooths this out and all helps facilitate spinning the wheel faster. And each section can be built out so much. There's so many little facets of each one. And finally, we talk about production. This is very similar to sales because sales will bring it in, production will put it out. And so you're gonna wanna have back to the revenue goal for the year, and then back to weekly production goals, daily production goals. On the production side, daily goals are much more important than I feel like they are necessarily on the sales side. As we grow bigger, I know sales goals that are even down to daily will be a bigger deal. Um, but the production goals day by day by day of what they actually need to produce to make sure that if it's sold, it's gonna go out of the business and it's gonna become top line revenue for then you to run your operations off of. So goals are huge. Things that facilitate production becoming easier are huge. So that might be um, something we talk about a lot in Growcom is how we use Google Drive to wrap up everything about a client, videos, plans, all the information, and then ship that to the teams. So they've got the information they need to know to go out and do the job without a bunch of going out and doing site visits and doing all this thing continuously making that wheel spin smoother. New equipment, things that make you more efficient, all these things boil into making that wheel spin smoother. Basically, you wanna know that they're getting the stuff out and you're making a smooth trans transition between sales and production. And so all of this is things you focus on to make a business grow faster, to get to a million dollars faster. And none of this has to be perfect. It all starts very small. If you can model and use other people's stuff so you can go faster in certain sections, that's great. But you just need to know, you need to block out a lot of the fires. Yes, you're gonna have to deal with them, but you need to have key focuses every week that revolve in marketing, sales, and production. And then you're gonna keep facilitating that, getting better and better and better every day. So with that being said, leave it in the comments. How much revenue does your business do now? And which area of the trifecta I'm speaking about do you lack in? Can't wait to talk to you soon. Can't wait to see your comments. I hope you have a great week and an awesome new year.